So you're looking to start a machine shop of your own, but new machinery is a little bit out of your budget. So you're gonna go to the used market, try to get something used, maybe a little bit late model to get your shop up and running. What are some things you should look out for when you're buying used machinery? And what are some things that you may want to try to get? What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool, back here again for Practical Machinist. And on this episode of Machine Shop Talk, we're gonna be diving back into the Practical Machinist forums to help answer a poster who came on with exactly this question. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so as promised today, we are going to be diving into the wild world of used machinery. Um, to quickly summarize the post that we'll link here, I um, highly recommend checking this thread out. I found it very insightful. But to quickly summarize the situation that the person was coming on with to ask this question, it sounds like they own a very small machine shop. It may even be a one man show. And the situation they have regarding that is they have this big job come through it sounds like fairly often you know maybe once a year maybe a couple times a year and for whatever reason this job is very labor intensive from the way they described it it sounds like they currently have no cnc or automation whatsoever in this shop and this job involves putting a lot of holes in a lot of parts manually with a bridge port so this guy is cranking handles and pulling handles all day long and every time this job comes through, this person says, you know, I get that kind of inspiration to go look at used machinery. Um, I realize that if I had some kind of CNC machinery, I could take this very labor intensive job and essentially run it while something else runs. And they're kind of looking at what do I do here? Now, the caveats to this is the budget that they are looking for to spend on a CNC machine is very small, comparatively. They want a fairly large machine for the budget they want to spend. So they don't want to buy a desktop mill. Doesn't sound like they want to buy some kind of, you know, essentially an, a manual mill with an automation package. You know, we've all seen them out there. It sounds like they want something fairly large, you know, like something that I have here, but something at a smaller budget. So essentially this relegates them to used late model machinery. So we're probably talking mid to late nineties, maybe early two thousands at the absolute newest based on the budget that they are outlining. Now the thread itself spends a lot of time. They were actually discussing certain brands and you know, certain models that these people are looking at and available things. But there was a lot of really good insight in this thread regarding buying used machinery and some things you should try to go towards and maybe some things you should avoid. So I do recommend checking it out. But the first thing that stood out to me and to others is that this person wants to spend essentially what people would consider is a small amount of money for a machine. I think their budget was twenty to $30,000. I think it was US funds. That is a very small amount of money to spend on a CNC machine. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that is a very small budget to go out there with. So you are gonna be limited as to the kind of things you can get. To head this right off at the pass, because they're looking at you know late 90s, early 2000s machines, probably with a lot of hours on them, you know, definitely use. There's nothing new for that, that in that size for that budget that you could possibly buy right now. There are a couple of things you're gonna to wanna to look out for because when you're browsing these used machinery dealers websites, there's one thing that I always see, because I see it every so often, or I see these kind of ads every so often, and they almost always say when they're describing the machine, uh, this machine is properly maintained, had a proper maintenance schedule, low hours and primarily cut aluminum. The reason why you're gonna see that a lot is that when it comes to used machinery, you are really rolling the dice on what you were getting. So the reason they say it's got low hours, only cut aluminum, properly maintained, 
is if we have two machines, so let's say we have two identical machines. We have machine A and machine B. They're the same year, same package, same model. Machine A genuinely mostly cut aluminum. So low cutting force, you know, high RPMs. It was cutting at the right speeds and feeds. Let's say that machine never got crashed or at least, you know, it never got crashed badly. And let's say that it was maintained properly. So, you know, people were going and changing the oil. People were replacing gaskets when they needed replacing. It was getting all the kind of maintenance, you know, you don't just buy a machine and throw it on the floor forever. It takes a lot of work to keep these things going. And much like a car, you can get away without changing the oil for a while, but if you don't do it, it's gonna cause problems. So machine A, let's say everything was done right on that machine and it was primarily cutting aluminum. Now let's say machine B over here, it was hogging steel for 20 years or hogging cast iron. You know, this was the rougher machine and they put it somewhere else to finish. Let's say that had a couple really good crashes. Somebody ran that spindle into the table before and now it's a little off. Let's say that it wasn't properly maintained. Let's say it has high hours. This thing was running all day, every day for 20 years. Those two machines, despite being the same model year, same package, same machine, because of the way they've been treated are going to be completely different machines by the time you bring them in your shop 20 years later. And a unfortunate fact is that that machine that was treated properly and was mostly cutting aluminum is gonna be far more accurate than that other machine is ever going to be because of the way it was treated, because of the function it served in that company. You know, even if you have a machine that was maintained properly, but was still doing a ton of hogging and had a lot of spindle force on there, you know, yeah, maybe that machine is not garbage, but that machine may need a new spindle and may need a new gearbox the ways may be blown out. You may not be able to hold proper accuracy in that machine. And the biggest reason why this is a problem, guys, is that even very, very skilled machinists who have done this for a very long time and have the knowledge to know, you know, how to program a machine, they may not be able to tell right away by looking at a machine if it's machine A or if it's machine B. You may not know if a machine has a problem until it's been on your floor for a few months. And frankly, guys, I don't know of many places that you're gonna buy a 20 year, year old used machine that's gonna say, hey, take it on your floor, run it for three months, and if you don't like it, we'll buy it back. I'm sure that exists out there somewhere, but I haven't seen it because it's like buying a used car. You might be able to buy a limited warranty on it, but you're still buying used. So it's something to think about that way. However, as many people pointed out in the forums, there are a lot of good use cases for used machinery. As one poster pointed out there, this shop, as they described it, has no CNC. They are a full generation, if not more, behind in technology compared to probably the majority of shops in their area. Certainly, you know, in the industry. We're talking automation with robots, you know, I don't have that either but this guy doesn't even have CNC's yet. And listen, there's a lot of good shops that do strictly manual work, but if you're doing manual work that's not suited for manual work and you can automate faster by bringing in a 20 year old CNC machine, the question becomes, you know, if we're debating brands and we're debating this and we're debating that, at this point, getting just about anything that's not gonna result in him spending more money. So as long as he doesn't get a total broken down piece of garbage, it's gonna do better than what he's doing right now. As one poster very eloquently put it, and I agreed with this, debating what brand of 20 year old CNC they wanna bring in right now is a lot like arguing what color lifeboat they want as the Titanic sinks with them on it. At this point, it's more important to bring something in, especially if they've, as they described it, had this conversation with themselves and looked at used machinery multiple times over the years. At this point, they really should be looking to pull the trigger, somewhat. If you are a small shop and you are a, or a new shop and you need capacity and you need it now and you don't have incredibly high expectations for the machine and you don't have a budget that really makes sense to buy a new machine, there's nothing wrong with used machinery. When it comes to pricing, CNCs are expensive. For the same price, you may be able to get a desktop CNC or one of those little mini mills with a six by six or you know 10 by 10 table 
for the same price, you could buy a 1999, you know, VF4 equivalent on the used market today. In that case, how many, and you know, that little desktop probably doesn't have a tool changer and it probably doesn't have the torque to be able to drill over, you know, a quarter inch. There's definitely a use case for having older and used machinery. You know, we bought, we have a 1994 and a 1996 machine back here. We actually bought the 1996 used at the time. I have put a spindle in there. I think I've put two gearboxes in there. The one servo cord just got snapped for some reason. So we have to fix that, the amplifier blew. The point is that even with all that money that I've put into it over the years, I couldn't buy new capacity at that time for that money. You know, even when I have to spend $15,000 to put a gearbox in it or something at the moment, I can't buy the capacity that that machine provides for that money. Now, at the same time, you don't wanna keep throwing good money after bad money. At a certain point, you wanna stop investing money in a 20 year old machine, but there is a use case for bringing in a machine for 20 or $30,000, spending maybe seven or eight to get it up and running, and all of a sudden you have a machine that, you know, you're not gonna do aerospace work with, but maybe all you need is essentially a drill tap machine. Or maybe essentially it's gonna be, you know, one of those B machines where all it's gonna do is hog out material so you can save time on your more advanced mills to do the finishing work. You know, we did a shop tour that hasn't come out yet. It should be out sh uh, shortly in North Carolina with a very small shop. They started in a garage. They have, I believe, a 1995 machine, and they had to spend some money to get it going, but they started their entire shop, and this thing has a pallet changer too, by the way. They started their entire shop for less than $30,000, and they're up, they're running, they're making money, and I believe they're already in the black, and they've been open for a very short time period. So when it comes to getting going, or when it comes to adding capacity, there's a use case for it, but you're gonna wanna make sure you do your homework. And just one more thing, guys, I just want to make sure I add this. When it comes to buying new machinery, you're still not exempt from this rolling the dice aspect as to what you get. You know, I think we all either have had a vehicle or know somebody who has had a vehicle where it's brand new. It's a great model year. Everybody loves these cars. And for whatever reason, they got a lemon. This thing, no matter what they do, it breaks down. They dump money into it. They can't figure out the problem. For whatever reason, not that model of vehicle, but that specific vehicle is no good. When it comes to new machinery, if you go through that forum post, I thought it was just me because I've had it happen to me before. But if you go through that forum post, there's a horror story about just about every brand out there. Um, you know, every model you can think of, for whatever reason, maybe someone was asleep at the wheel when they were assembling that machine that day, or maybe that thing's just cursed. For whatever reason, you're still kind of rolling the dice. I don't know of any brand that is immune to this that I've discovered yet. So while you're a lot more protected with warranties and you know the potential of actually getting it fixed, do realize that every machine you bring on is going to be a bit of a roll of the dice. It's gonna be an experience. You know, I know companies that have brought on 200 machines and they've all been good. I know a company that brought in three of that same machine and one of them was no good. It, it kind of happens, guys. So it's something you're gonna wanna watch out for. In any case, I'd like to know in the comments below, what are some things you recommend people watch out for when buying used machinery? What's a red flag where if you see this in an ad or if you go look at a machine, is there something you should look at? You know, it's like looking under the toilet tank at a house and you can tell what year the house was made because typically for a long time, people didn't replace their toilets that often. If there's something you can give to the community here in the comments to help them buy used machinery, please by all means drop it because this is how we grow, this is how we learn, this is how we help each other. Thank you very much for watching guys. As always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thanks again, you take care.